Welcome everyone to the Inti Hub's 10X webinar. My name is Novel Cahyadi. I am the CEO and founder of Inti Hub, and I will be your webinar host tonight. Today, actually. I mean, some people are still in the morning, right? <laughs> so 10X webinar is a platform where we will have dialogues about the future, innovation, exponential technologies, exponential transformation, as well as future-proof leadership. So allow me to introduce to you a little bit about IntiHub. We are an award-winning innovation and exponential consulting agency with a focus on partnering with the clients to help them navigate disruptive innovation to achieve their exponential business growth. So if your organization is looking to kickstart or jumpstart innovation to achieve the business growth within your organization, so you can simply talk to us. And you can also check out our programs and services in our website, so intihub.com. So today we're going to talk about exponential organizations. And some people would probably ask questions, what is exponential organization? So I'm just showing to you the definition of exponential organization according to Salmi Smile and friends who actually co-authored the exponential organization book. So according to them, Exponential organization is the one whose impact or output is disproportionately large, at least 10x or 10 times larger compared to its peers because of the use of new organizational techniques that leverage accelerating technologies. So here I'm highlighting two things, new organizational techniques and accelerating technologies. These are the two important ingredients to become an exponential organization or EXO. So in this webinar, we will introduce the EXO formula, the 11 attributes that the exponential organizations have in common, the repeatable uh, process about creating EXOs or transforming your business into an exponential organization. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Peter Christoph. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Good, good everything for everyone. <laughs> oh, good everybody everyone. Are. Good morning, afternoon, evening. <laughs> Calling all the way from Budapest, Hungary. So thank you for joining us today, uh, Peter. Peter Christoph is the Chief Innovation Officer at Your Anastomosis, a startup making surgical education data driven. He's the President of Chief Innovation Officers Association in Hungary and board member at the Hungarian Association for Innovation. By the way, he's got a long list of credentials, so I'm gonna have to shorten it a bit. So he's a seasoned advisor, lecturer, speaker, researcher, and specialist in disruptive innovation, exponential technologies, and industry 4.0. Having several transformation projects, a PhD and Harvard degree under his belt. He currently acts as a certified exponential organization coach, trainer, and ambassador at the Open Expo. He's going to talk a little bit about Open Expo today. His massive transformative purpose, or MTP, is creating welfare and prosperity through science and technology. So for those who don't know what MTP is, again, he's going to talk about it also. So Peter, over to you. Yes, no, well, so thanks for the invitation again, and uh, happy to talk about uh, the exponential organizations and the, the transformative process uh, we have been uh, working on with uh, for the last couple of years, and also happy to spread another type, a good type of virus <laughs> over, over this community, as we call it, the, the EXO, uh, the EXO virus. So I also uh, prepared uh, some slides uh, for you. So let me share my screen and start my uh, presentation. So uh, since uh, Novel already uh, in, in introduced me, I will jump start in, in, into the middle. Uh, so there are uh, lots of global grand, grand challenges out there. And uh, I think that also within this community, uh, we can agree on that uh, those global grand challenges are the biggest and most significant uh, business opportunities uh, for, for all of us. So solving, for example, energy problems or uh, providing food for everyone on the planet or safe, uh, safety or water, 
uh, are huge problems, huge challenges, but also big business opportunities. And there is also the so-called uh, global health, which was also targeted by the uh, startup I am also working with. And uh, they found that just uh, in the European Union, there are 400,000 people who uh, yearly undergo vascular surgery. And a very high amount, 40% uh, is at risk uh, during or after uh, this surgery. And since uh, these problems occur regularly, it causes uh, just in the European Union, uh, 2.8 billion US dollars extra cost uh, extra cost caused by the so-called anastomosis related problems and uh, i stop here for a while and anastomosis means artificial vessel connections uh, so if somebody is undergoing for example vascular surgery uh, then uh, in, in his uh, or her heart uh, the blocked uh, parts of the vessels are bypassed uh, creating artificial vessel uh, connections and uh, this problem arises because there are no objective and scalable educational tools uh, in, in this field. And actually what this startup and the founders uh, did just one, one year ago, that they have uh, taken off the shelf components uh, in the field of uh, augmented or virtual reality, 3D everything, 3D printing, 3D scanning, and also combine these solutions with computational fluid dynamics, uh, with artificial intelligence or uh, machine learning based uh, analysis and they put together a so-called simulator uh, in a box which can be used by uh, surgeons of, uh, of any any type even uh, practicing surgeons or, or uh, medical students to train their skills and uh, this uh, this is done because uh, the methodologies uh, uh, which are used to train uh, medical students and surgeons all over the globe are uh, in this field 30 or even 40 years uh, old. And it's a very good example of how exponential uh, technologies enable to arise of such kind of, uh, such kind of startups. And as this startup did, many and lots of other people uh, which are pointing at different problems are coming up uh, with new solutions every day and they uh, decide to turn to, uh, to entrepreneurship and become entrepreneurs instead of uh, joining a big company or being government uh, officials. And I also prepared a question uh, for you, which uh, I asked Novel to, to, to start, um, which is uh, about that, uh, what do you think or what do you guess how many people uh, decide on the globe every day, every day that they uh, turn towards entrepreneurship and they became, become uh, entrepreneurs? So the poll is uh, on. Should I share the result? Yes. So most of the people, 40% were voting uh, for selecting the, the, the good one, which is 234, 35,000. So actually, this is the number of people decide on the globe every day to, to come up uh, with something new because they have spotted the problem and they are having some something in their hearts and minds that to solve this problem, they see a business opportunity uh, <coughs> over there. So they want to become uh, entrepreneurs. Okay, so and um, back to our topic uh, for uh, today's webinar. You could ask uh, the question, so I stop sharing the results, or you know that you can do that as well. Yeah. And that uh, you could ask the question why is it uh, important to talk about um, exponentials? And uh, my, my answer is, yeah, it's, it's her, she's, uh, she's Yasmin, uh, she's my daughter. Uh, when the picture was taken, she was about three years old, now she's about six. And why, once we were sitting in the car, uh, she asked me, Daddy, when I will uh, be allowed to drive the car? And yeah, instead of very replying, replying her quickly, okay, when you will turn uh, 17 or 18 and you will have a driving license. Uh, but instead, I, I answered her, okay, when you will be 18, uh, then uh, most of the cars will be autonomous and uh, probably uh, humans won't be able to drive on the, on the streets their own cars. Uh, so the uh, imagination what we have about uh, transportation and, and cars will be totally, uh, totally different as we experience uh, today's and this uh, industry which is uh, related to uh, automotive industry will be totally uh, changed and also uh, disrupted. And, in behind, uh, there is uh, the, the waste and accelerating um, 
growth of the computational pro uh, power we can see uh, with the computers. So actually we are having and holding supercomputers in our pocket using our mobile phones because uh, just a few decades ago uh, the, uh, the fastest computer didn't have the uh, computational power as we are having now at our fingertips uh, every day. And uh, you could ask the question, uh, why is all this uh, happening? Uh, his guy is called uh, Gordon Moore. He is the co-founder of, of Intel. And 50 years ago, uh, he made a, a famous prediction uh, and his colleagues and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, co-workers called this uh, Moore's law. And according to Moore's law, there is a doubling price performance rate for computers uh, every 18 18 months and since 50 years this prediction uh, was more or less uh, punctual and uh, it's progn prognosed that it, it won't stop. So in behind this is this uh, phenomenon what we uh, can uh, experience. But uh, going forward on what does it mean uh, in our real lives? Uh, what you can see on the right side of, the, uh, of my screen is, uh, is a digital camera. A digital camera, the first version of uh, which looked like that. And I think many of us here in this call are familiar with the example uh, of, of Kodak. And uh, the inventor, Stephen Sesson, put together the first version of, the, of this camera in 1975. It uh, weighed about uh, 3.5 kilos. It took like, more than 20 seconds to make a 0.01 megapixel uh, photo uh, with, uh, in, in a grayscale. Uh, and uh, what we have seen in the last 40-45 uh, years is massive development. The resolution become thousand times uh, more efficient and the weight and the price uh, diminished uh, dramatically. And if you would like to calculate and sum up, we could see a one billion fold uh, improvement uh, in this field. But uh, usually what happens to uh, in innovation is that the so-called organizational immune system comes and attacks uh, all the in, uh, all the in innovation. This is the situation what happened also with uh, with Steven Sesson because his bosses made him hide uh, this solution. And for two or two and a half decades, it was no problem for for Kodak because it was uh, valued with uh, a very high valuation, employed more than uh, twenty thousand people all over the the world. Uh, but the the technology was uh, uh, suddenly developing and doubling price. Uh, performance pattern was followed also in the, in the uh, in early years, and we all know what uh, what happened to Kodak. But with we, but uh, what we experience as of today is that there are dozens of so-called disruptive technologies or exponential technologies which are going mainstream all at once, and this is unprecedented uh, in the in the history of technology and also in the history of uh, business opp opportunities. So, if we would like to and somehow showcase how the devel development looks like we, we should use an exponential uh, curve. And we could mention some uh, technologies like uh, autonomous vehicles, space technology, satellites, solar batteries, transportation, artificial intelligence. And uh, you could ask the question, what's the common all in these technologies besides being exponential uh, technologies? Yes, and the answer is that uh, Elon Musk, because he's uh, very famous in spotting this. Tech, uh, technologies, uh, not uh, late, not uh, when the development has already happened, but when the technology is in so-called deceptive uh, phase. So his strategy is very, very easy, we could say, but very uh, difficult to replicate. And he starts investing into those technologies. For example, let's take a, a, a digital photography as an example. In 1975, it was 0 0.01 megapixel. Then in two years, it became 0 0.02. 0 0.04, 0 0.08, still very close to, to zero and almost nothing to spot. Uh, but when it became around one megapixel by the end of the 90s and then two and four and eight, then, uh, uh, then it was too late to react uh, by, by Kodak and we all know what happened to them. So just in 10 years, uh, this doubling pattern can uh, lead to a huge uh, difference. And if you are in with, this, with those technology, uh, technologies early on, as Elon is uh, doing, and many others are, are, are doing, then uh, your competitors will uh, be uh, in, in a far and uh, secret distance uh, from, uh, from, from you. And since not only Elon uh, is the only one who is making uh, important uh, uh, decisions and keeps going on, 
with coming up new solutions, uh, we also learned that persistence become very, very popular and very, very important in this field. So this is the, uh, it's time for uh, answering the second Apple. question. That what do you think, how many times have Larry Page and Sergey Brin, founders of Google, pitched before they get their first, first funding? And most of the people have voted for 127, but the right answer is 350. Wow. So <laughs> imagine what, uh, how, how the world would look like if they stopped that for uh, 340. <laughs> this a uh, coincidence, actually, today I saw someone posting the picture of uh, Larry and uh, Sergey on, on the Garats, the first time yes. that we found it Google. <laughs> Maybe they have some anniversaries because I have seen a photo of their first office after they left the garage status. <laughs> so uh, persistence uh, became very, very uh, important. And many people are uh, spotting uh, future trends and, and possibilities what exponential uh, technologies are uh, un unlocking. So it's not... Uh, uh, so it's not surprising that uh, the so-called Unicorn companies become, become uh, abundant in, in this field. Unicorn companies are called those ones which are still private, uh, but are valued more than 1 billion US dollars. And they were called unicorns because 15 years ago they were very, very rare and only a few companies could uh, have and keep that valuation. But today we count uh, 474 such kind of uh, of, of unicorn companies. So there are no fields uh, where unicorns are uh, not present and not coming up uh, regularly, daily with new disruptions, new exponential technologies, new business uh, models. And so they are uh, uh, disrupting uh, important uh, in industries also with their established uh, uh, players on, on that field. And it's uh, not surprising that uh, many of those uh, well-known brands are, are disappearing. And uh, my last question to the audience is, uh, is as, as follows. Uh, so what do you think in 10 years, how many year of the uh, best, how many percent of the best known brands and the largest companies uh, will be gone, so will go bankrupt or will be acquired or will just close uh, their operations? Yes, and the majority Surprising. voted for the right one. So 40% 40, 40 and they, I will also show you uh, why, it will, uh, why it will happen. So this chart uh, shows us uh, the general and average lifespan of uh, a company in the so-called S&P 500 index. So those index contains uh, the biggest companies all over the globe. And as we see uh, from the last uh, 40, 55 years uh, that it was shrinking year, year by year and it's having this uh, 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 volatility because it's a uh, moving average statistical point uh, of, of UN. This trend will, will continue and average lifespan will go under 15 years and if we statistically calculate then it also means that in 15 years uh, that in 10 years 40 percent of those uh, of, of those companies will be gone. So just think of any big brand or big company uh, and out of 10, four won't be with us just in, in 10 years. The question is uh, whether your company uh, will be the one which, is, uh, which comes up as a disruptor or will be one which will be uh, the disruptive. So we can say, uh, and it was also said by Dave, David Rose, who is the uh, godfather of angel investment, uh, in angel investors in, in New York, that any company which, is, which was designed for success in the 20th century is doomed to failure in the 24th, 10th, 21st century. And mainly it happens because uh, the exponential technologies. And the question is how we can come up with such kind of uh, solution on, uh, to, to meet this uh, challenge. And we can say that the old profit driver for those companies was selling scarcity. So previously, if uh, there was no scarcity, you didn't have uh, a business. But digital technologies, exponential technologies have uh, changed this uh, landscape. And the new profit driver became, uh, to, became that you can leverage on uh, abundance and come up with such kind of business models and uh, organizational structures uh, which can scale as technology does. And uh, this phenomenon was also uh, uh, researched by, by Salim Ismail uh, in his book, Exponential Organizations. 
uh, Salim was uh, the founding CEO of Singularity University back in 2009. And uh, after running the Singularity University for uh, half a decade, for five, six years, he was uh, putting all his uh, findings into, into this book, and was, which was published five years ago. And uh, he came up with a scalable and repeatable solution about accessing and managing abundance. And uh, in his book, he also created uh, the definition of uh, exponential organization, uh, which was also shown by, by, by Novo. And, but the most important part of uh, the characteristics of exponential organizations it is that they can uh, scale by exponentially dropping the marginal cost uh, of set supply. Uh, so what does, uh, what does that mean? Just, uh, taking an, uh, one more step uh, backwards uh, in the early, uh, 20, early of the 20th, uh, 21st century, uh, that, uh, for example, the internet and the social media allowed for startups to drop the cost of uh, demand exponentially. But the holy grail was still how you can drop the, your this, uh, marginal cost of supply uh, to, to zero. For example, for Airbnb, it doesn't cost anything to, uh, to add an additional hotel room uh, to, their, uh, to their offer. Or for, for Uber, it doesn't cost anything to have one more, uh, one more taxi driver in their, fle in their fleet. Uh, it is not true for, for example, Hyatt or Hilton, which needs to invest heavily if they want to build a new hotel and come up with uh, with new rooms so uh, and uh, as we found in the last couple of years using this model that exos are a new breed uh, of in impact driven organizations which can scale as quick as technology does or allows them or even even quicker and they are combining and leveraging on the top of the, those companies and uh, they can even transform industries uh, overnight and it's uh, also not, not a surprise that the hierarchy of the 21st century or the so-called age of the fourth industrial revolution has dramatically uh, changed and on the top we see digital only products or physic physical products with uh, information based uh, re revenue streams so just taking 10 years back uh, a look back uh, the top 10 or top 20 companies on the globe were mainly coming from the oil industry or uh, something like or, or from uh, a retail industry or uh, pharma companies but now we see Facebook and Twitter and Google and Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and those companies on, on, on the top of the biggest and most significant uh, companies. You could ask the question, okay, then uh, how does this whole process uh, looks like? And it can be abbreviated uh, very shortly with six Ds, uh, which are the six Ds of exponential organization. And everything starts with uh, when be something becomes digitized. This, has, this was the story of digital cameras. Steven Sesson at Kodak invented the new stuff, which made a previously physical uh, and analog uh, solution uh, digital. And for many, many years, it can be in the so-called deceptive phase, as it was the case of digital photography. Just in, uh, think back what I mentioned, 0 0.01 megapixels, 0 0.02 megapixels. Nothing significant has happened until uh, they hit the one megapixel resolution. And this is the point where disruption uh, was, was uh, happening the, the third V of exponential organizations. And then uh, all the stuff, the film uh, became uh, useless, so it was dematerialized. So no film was uh, required uh, anymore, and so did the, the money uh, flew out from this, uh, uh, from this e ecosystem. And by the end, a uh, whole industry was democratized. So now you can take a photo for free. It doesn't cost you anything uh, to, to make a photo. The problem is a lot more where you store the, and how you uh, select and how you group those, those photos. And new business models came up for, for those ones, storing and accessing uh, those, those, those photos. And uh, the next one, uh, you could ask, okay, so what's the secret of those companies which uh, are able to scale as technology does? And the uh, formula for exponential organizations looks like this. Uh, an EXO consists of uh, an MTP, which is the so-called massive transformative purpose, and it has 10 uh, common uh, characteristics, or as we call them, attributes, which can be abbreviated, scale, and IDS. And uh, let's jump over to this part and let me uh, de uh, declare what those, uh, what those really mean. First of all, no exponential organization exists without, uh, without a so-called massive transformative purpose. 
which is the higher aspirational goal of the of the organization and it also serves as a key guiding principle when important decisions uh, need, need to be made. Uh, it has also several other characteristics, but what I mostly like is that it's about passion. So when you have something in your head, uh, share your passion with, with the people, create a community, uh, uh, reach out to the people around you or around it, that, that problem and share your passions and take a look how people will react on, <clears throat> on, on, on that one. And also imagine the transformation, how the world will look differently if you will be successful with your solution, successful with your initiative, or successful with your uh, <clears throat> with, with your startup. Let's give uh, let me give also an example on, on this one. Uh, if you are in a car industry, you could say okay uh, that you are building the safest car for everyone. It's also nice. It has also lots of challenge. I am think that if somebody is creating a, a safe car for the people, that it will be also uh, from business point of view profitable and uh, and also will grow grow quickly, but what if you would say that uh, your massive transformative purpose is zero collision? We also feel that it's also something similar, but it's a lot more, a uh, lot, lot more different. And uh, it's also about hearts and, and minds, how you can reach the people uh, all over the world, how you can tap into the different com communities. And uh, uh, following this massive transformative purpose, you don't need to be a car manufacturer. You can be all, even a technology a provider or uh, be an entrepreneur in an adjacent market uh, which is about disrupting the current uh, car business or car industry that makes uh, cars useless as we have seen also in the situation of COVID so no people are uh, a lot, lot less people are using uh, their, their cars and uh, since then the concept of MTP is very very important many other people were talking something about something very, very uh, similar. As Richard Branson used to say, if the dreams of your company don't scare you, then they are too small. So if you are following your dreams, you are following your passion, always think about how big they are. And they should be so big uh, that it should even scare not only you, but also the people around you. So then you can start feeling that it's something very, very uh, successful. And it's very interesting that uh, we are talking about the the importance of massive transformative purpose for almost five years. And uh, Harvard Business Review came up with his, uh, its most recent uh, issue, how important it is, how to lead with purpose. It's the cover on their latest, uh, latest issue. And it also shows that uh, <clears throat> the, the purpose-driven organization are also finding their way toward the, towards the mainstream. And we are really happy about uh, that one that we have been on our early propagators uh, of, uh, of the importance of the purpose and the, it's, uh, the, the business they are driven by. And also you could ask the question as a next step, how you can create your, your MTP? Uh, I would say it's very, very easy, but it's an iterative process you need to uh, continuously uh, repeat. First of all, you should ask yourself why. Why does your organization exist? With this, you can define uh, the, pro the problem space you are in or you want uh, and you are about to tap into. Uh, as next, you can ask how will uh, your organization or your initiative or your startup solve this one. So you should imagine the transformation of the current state because changing something, changing the status quo, changing uh, the, the current state uh, without doing so, uh, you won't be able to make, make a difference. You won't be able to make an impact. And this is what is the, by the end of the, the process, what will be the global uh, impact and make, make sure that it's a global approach. And in global, it means that uh, you should think something big, start, but start small. And the, the EXO approach allows you that you can scale as quick as, uh, as possible. And uh, to come up with, uh, with some new, with some few uh, examples on, on those, those ones, so uh, for MTPs, for example, for TED, it's uh, ideas for spreading, or for Google, it's organized the world's uh, information, or for Singularity University, it's about positively impacting at least one billion people. We all feel that those are something very, very massive. And uh, uh, for example, Google will never reach uh, that they will have all the, all, uh, all the information, or we hope at least, uh, but everything, uh, all the steps they made, all the decisions they made uh, are about organizing the world's uh, inf information and making a progress towards this massive transformative purpose. 
and as it was mentioned uh, by uh, by Noel in his intro in uh, my introduction, uh, every person can and should have uh, a personal M MTP, and there are my personal MTPs that welfare and prosperity through science and technology. It's because uh, I myself well, I'm also a researcher, but was working with many many scientists and technology experts uh, to combine different technologies and come up coming up with uh, solutions on already existing uh, problems. So I really suggest you that you think about your purpose, thinking about what your personal impact be and how you can change something in your surroundings, in your region, in your country or globally, if you are about to become a global uh, leader in this field. And uh, let's, go in, let's go on with the uh, 10 so-called attributes of the exponential organizations, with, which can be abbreviated as scale and, uh, and idea. So they are uh, there are 10 uh, so-called uh, EXO attributes, uh, where five are about accessing abundance. Uh, Staff on demand is, is the one which uh, provides you the required expertise. Think the situation that uh, usually the best people don't work for you. And it's much better that you access them only on demand uh, 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 and not employing them and not having them uh, all the time at your uh, at, at your organization this is what for example uh, uber is doing with the drivers so they are not employing any any drivers but are having the drivers when there is a need for them <clears throat> the next one is community which uh, provides you the required momentum to change and the momentum to reach out to people uh, around your business and around your organization and uh, for example ted is doing the same uh, with with, uh, with communities or algorithms, it's about uh, analyzing the data you, you have, uh, and it is what creates value for you, and Netflix is doing the same. And the next one is the so-called leveraged assets, which provides you flexibility. Just think of Airbnb's rooms, so they don't have to invest and not, don't have to spend capex uh, on, on this one. And uh, the last one uh, about accessing abundance is the engagement, which provides you the required uh, participation. Just think about X prizes. Uh, global competitions, how many people they are engaging. And uh, Novel is also about launching a, a similar competition on the Middle East on uh, coming up uh, with scalable solutions to uh, solve employment uh, challenges um, over there in that region. And if you are uh, successfully accessed that abundance, then it's a question how you can uh, uh, manage that abundance you could uh, tap into. And uh, it's, there are also five uh, attributes, interfaces, dashboards, experiments, autonomy, and social. Uh, I also under, I only underline here the experiment uh, parts, which, is, uh, which were highly populated by and pioneered by the, the Lean Startup movement, which uh, uh, pro promoted that experimentation should be part of, uh, of any cal corporate culture and failing for good, failing forward is not really a, is not a problem, but rather should uh, be a repeatable process to come up with new solutions and to test new uh, hypotheses uh, around your, your, your business model. And the question is whether you can measure your company according to these attributes. And uh, in the last couple of years, we also came up with an, an automated scoring system, and I am happy to inv invite you uh, to to take this uh, to take this scoring. Uh, the link will follow will lead you uh, to the exponential quotient uh, questionnaire. And if you have like 20 minutes and answer the uh, the questions uh, raised by the uh, the questionnaire, then you will have a score which can uh, range from one to, to 100 and it shows how exponential is your organization. And if you add your, <coughs> your contact details, then I will reach you out and uh, we can set up a, a quick conversation about the possible uh, next, uh, next step. So Noel will also share this link in, in the chat and you can follow uh, yeah, I this did. one. So, <laughs> so everyone to, should um, see the, uh, the link for the EXO uh, yes. survey. Uh, EXQ. <coughs> And the, and the last question uh, during our journey is how you can become an ex exponential organization. And in the last uh, four years, the, the EXO community ca uh, came up with a so-called EXO Sprint, which is a 10-week procedure uh, which leads you leads your way uh, towards uh, validating your initiatives, uh, whether being there at, at your core business or on the on the edge of your uh, current 
organization to make it more uh, visible. I also brought here uh, a few uh, slide, slides on this one. Let's imagine that the you know, current organization looks like this and many things around you and your environment are changing, uh, disruptive forces are coming, COVID is coming and going, new competitors, new technologies uh, are, are, are coming and approaching you, mainly from adjacent markets, so it's very difficult to spot them. So you, your business model uh, needs some, uh, some modification, make it more flexible, make it more uh, scalable, but you shouldn't uh, uh, change your business models uh, so deep that it's, uh, it doesn't look similar as, as it was previously. So it's about incremental in innovations, keeping your business model but leveraging on already uh, existing assets, but somehow incorporating exponential technologies within your, uh, within, uh, your current business model and for your uh, offer offerings. But on the edges, uh, far away from the so-called corporate immune system, you should always be able to come up with disruptive uh, initiatives where uh, there are no legacy constraints and uh, you can come up with new business, uh, business models. And uh, throughout this 10-week uh, period, it's very, very important uh, that we are working and we are creating the so-called cross-functional teams. So in a, from a large or, larger organization, uh, usually 15 to 25 people are, are involved, but created on a, on a cross-functional uh, basis. And we always uh, apply a so-called coach-based uh, approach. So we don't want to tell what to do. We only tell uh, how to think about, how to approach uh, the different problems, the different challenges you are, you are facing and how you can come up uh, with scalable solutions and how you can run experiments around and, and, and test your hypothesis, test your uh, assumptions. And it's very, very important uh, that it's uh, uh, with this solution we could uh, solve the so-called corporate immune system problem. And corporate immune system is something useful when it's not hyperactive, but in many cases it uh, also acts against uh, the change uh, for good, the change for a better future of, of the company, and uh, doesn't allow your people uh, to come up with innovative uh, solution. And with this, with this approach, uh, with especially with edge initiatives, where we can handle and we can tackle the, the immune system of, of any corporate, any organization. And in many larger organizations, we also experience that there are uh, many innovation initiatives around. And it's very important that with an uh, EXO Sprint, we align, uh, we put it under one umbrella, all the innovation initiatives within one uh, organization. And it's about balancing risk and innovation. Just uh, think of Marriott, how it could look like or how it uh, would look like if they have uh, undergone an EXO sprint. They could be a slightly modified business model on the, on the core and could come up with TripAdvisor, Booking.com, or even Airbnb uh, on, on, on the edges. So actually, this is what uh, the EXO uh, sprint is about. And the future state, what we think uh, will, will look like is that you start small, create your edge initiatives, but you can scale fast because of applying the EXO attributes. And just in a five to 10 years period, the, the solution can be uh, look, look like this. And since there are many more organizations dealing and using the EXO methodology, out of, uh, one out of these organizations is the EXO Works. And we have been running also successful sprints, uh, mainly for large uh, and global organizations, but uh, in the last uh, couple of years, we have seen that uh, the movement has found its way to, uh, toward startups. And let me give you a few more uh, quick examples before I, I finish. We have been working, or actually Procter & Gamble was the first client, first big company using the EXO sprint methodology. And in the last uh, four years since they were finishing their first uh, sprint, they launched 25 initiatives uh, with a tiny budget, mainly focusing on, on the so-called freeing up employees for, for free and eight projects are still uh, on track and delivering uh, at least 50 uh, million US dollars per, per year value or a kind of 10x in a customer satisfaction. And we are very grateful for, uh, for Pro Procter & Gamble because they were very open to experiment with us the early version of the EXO Sprint. Since then it also, of course, evolved, uh, but they were the one we could work with. And uh, we have been also working with the Mexican Interprotection Company. This is uh, a brokerage uh, firm offering uh, uh, um, 
financial services for, for uh, tens of thousands of, of their, uh, or even millions of their clients. And after there was the Puebla and the Mexico City earthquakes back in 2017, as far as I uh, remember, they could reassemble the Sprint team, which, came, which could come up just in two weeks with scalable solutions of new offerings, and uh, which re resulted in doubling their revenues and tripling their profits within the upcoming uh, financial year. Or we have been also working with a, with a major car parts manufacturer uh, where one of the core initiatives was about uh, introducing uh, artificial intelligence based algorithms, interfaces, and dashboards. So, three of uh, the 10 AEX attributes. And just in the first year, they could save uh, one, one million US dollars, uh, just eliminating or reducing dramatically their false alarm uh, system. Uh, and uh, so these, these results show that uh, the, the methodology can deliver real value uh, for you. And what, what to do, uh, what uh, can you do as, as the next uh, step? So the first book was about ingredients, showing you the 11 attributes of the EXO Sprint. Uh, and last year, we made all our findings uh, so-called open source. So we open source the methodology itself and published the book with Wiley with the title Exponential uh, Transformation. This is introducing the, the 10 week EXO sprint. So everybody can feel free, take the book and start their innovation journey uh, tomorrow. But if you don't want to feel uh, yourself alone, we created a so-called kitchen where you can cook your food uh, using uh, the uh, different people and, and help. And this is the so-called Open EXO, which is the global transformation uh, ecosystem. Uh, and uh, I uh, highly suggest that you register. There are no fees uh, in, involved into that one, so you can find and meet five, more than 5,000 like-minded uh, people where you can find advisors, coaches, speakers, experts from the different uh, fields that you will need uh, where you are, uh, during your uh, transformation journey. And since we didn't stop uh, here, we also came up with a new solution. This is so-called EXO Launchpad or Purpose Alliance Launchpad. Uh, for, for startups, which is the uh, modified version of, uh, of the EXO Sprint for, uh, for smaller organizations or for edge initiatives. And uh, I think Noel will mention a few words about this one because uh, his initiative, what uh, he will announce soon, will be using this uh, methodology. So feel free uh, to, to uh, register for that one if you want to learn about how this methodology looks like. This is uh, un under, under progress, so it's not yet finished. Uh, we are iterating around, so it's in an experimental phase. But it's kind of me uh, meta methodology combining lean startup method methodology, design thinking, the EXO sprint uh, it itself, the lean, lean startup uh, movement, and uh, all the uh, methodologies from the past uh, 10 or 15 years. And last but not least, uh, what you should uh, uh, do tomorrow, uh, I invite you to fill out the EXQ survey, uh, take the book and le learn how to transform, run your EXO sprint on your own, or if you feel like, uh, then uh, log into OpenEXO and look for uh, um, support and coaches and mentors. And if you are a startup, then you, you use, uh, your, you use our EXO Launchpad uh, to, to iterate uh, around and come up with scalable solutions because uh, the EXO methodology itself uh, is about how to come up with scalable solutions, scalable businesses and scalable uh, business models. And you should, shouldn't forget that uh, if you are not the disruptor, then you will be uh, disrupted and there is no third option using Salim's words, uh, words to close uh, my presentation. So happy to answer your questions. Sorry, I was I ran a bit uh, over, over time, uh, but definitely uh, we'll answer your questions. As no, that, that's as perfect timing, uh, Peter. <laughs> that's perfect timing. Thank you so much. So I like it actually, if you're not disrupting, so you're going to get disrupted. I just want to yes. show everyone that I got the two books that uh, Peter was mentioning, sorry about the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so I get a very first version of the, the second book, which yes. is still on the uh, white cover before they change it to black. Yes, for I also reason. have it one. <laughs> this one. It's a fantastic book, actually. Yes, yeah, so it has a white uh, cover because it was a private edition uh, yeah. in the end of 2018. So we, got, we are the uh, early adopter of the, uh, the second book. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, interesting, um, <clears throat> Peter, out of the 11 attributes that you mentioned, the MTP and the scale ideas, 
Which one do you think is the most important ones for the people, to mm-hmm. become, for the organization to become exponential organization? Yeah, so not taking uh, the MTP into account because there, yeah. there are no exos without, without, Absolutely. without MTP. Absolutely, so MTP uh, is a must. <laughs> It, uh, it, it, it depends. So uh, since I also have a technology background, I like the tr- triad of, uh, of uh, in- interfaces, uh, dashboards and algorithms because that, that is how you can tap into the data abundance. So that, for example- Do you mind, uh, sorry, while talking about the, these attributes, do you mind going back to your slides of these scale yes. ideas? Yes, so, uh, so accessing abundance, uh, you need algorithms, but for having, having the data, you can uh, you you can uh, make analysis of. You would need interfaces, and after you have done the analysis part of this one, you can come up with dashboards. So let's get back to the uh, example of if you are anastomosis, the small uh, uh, surgical training startup I am I am working with. Uh, so they are collecting data uh, not only from their own analysis but from other health medical systems uh, Im- images of uh, x-ray images or uh, MR- M- MRI images or uh, how do we call them ultrasound um, I- images as, as well but they are also making their own analysis so they they are using our interfaces from different systems to get the data they have algorithms. This is the computational fluid dynamics. So they analyze how the vessel structure would behave if it would be in a real situation. So how the blood, blood, blood would flow uh, through that tube and how it would behave in a five to 10 years period, actually, when new problems can come up and regularly come up if there are a heart surgery or vascular uh, surgery. And they created nice dashboards to, to show, show the surgeons their results. Okay, so if you if that client uh, we simulated for you would have been a real client, and you would make the artificial vessel connections like this, uh, this would have uh, immediate or five year or or ten year consequences like this. So we highly suggest that you improve your skills according to this one, this one, this one, this one, and they can also show on the images where to make your skills better, how to nail and cut. Uh, th- those parts within a, within a human organ. And uh, the most riskiest part uh, was taken out from the real operating room because for the doctors, the best is to operate on real situations, but it's the most riskiest one. So if you can uh, uh, skip uh, and bring it to the uh, simulator, those parts, those 40, 50 uh, vascular surgeries, for example, which is the most uh, riskiest part in every surgeon's life, then you already could diminish that 40% risk, uh, even to four or, or, or less. So, and uh, these three attributes, I usually go hand, hand in hand, and you need all of them to, uh, to make progress. For example, if you, are a, if you are a startup, then autonomy might not be as important for you because your organization yeah. is so small, uh, so you don't need to have, I don't know, all accuracy or OKRs, but it's good to have the basics for that one. So if you will go bigger, then it won't be a problem how you scale your uh, or organization. Or uh, what COVID brought uh, a big advancement in this field is using social uh, uh, attributes. And it's not about using social media to, com- to uh, communicate with your outside, with your communities, with, with your uh, with your crowd, but rather making the internal collaboration more transparent, more measurable, more traceable, and more uh, so-called uh, controllable. So you can make it more efficient uh, using the different tools. It was very interesting when we were running a sprint with uh, Hewlett Packard. It was very new for them three years ago uh, that they are using social uh, technologies, for example, Slack or Zoom <laughs> yeah. uh, to, to have conversations mm-hmm. within such kind of technological company. The new so, normal, right? The new normal, <laughs> yes. And uh, we were also having discussions about whether this model should be changed. And uh, we just started to work on the new version of the exponential organizations book, which will, which is planned to come up, uh, come out in the end of this year. Okay. Uh, but uh, we agreed on that uh, the, the model okay. is is the same. <laughs> All right. So we got one question from Fahim Sawan. Hi, Fahim. I was asking, is Netflix considered a unicorn company? Uh, not, not anymore because uh, Netflix went public. 
and yeah, the unicorns exactly. are th those ones which uh, are, are are private or having of course private also means that they are having uh, investors vcs uh, in their share among their share shareholders but it's uh, already beyond uh, the unicorn it's 20 yeah, billion so uh, 20 billion billion us dollars company no, one one billion and since unicorns become uh, uh, very uh, very common there is an, another phrase coming up uh, which is called decacorns decacorn yeah the, the i was talking about valued. netflix now it's uh, 20 billion uh, it's 20 billion the valuation but it's uh, uh, it's since it's uh, has a uh, public quotation yeah stock exchange it's not not a unicorn okay. anymore regardless thank you peter value. so we have another one from daniel in cameron hi daniel um Daniel has a question, will Airbnb and Uber or Uber operate as exponential organization as far as a biolog biological or health threat like COVID-19 pandemic leads to social distancing and borders closures? Yes. So, Interesting, uh, actually. I like, I like the way that uh, <laughs> the question leads us into the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes, so uh, from this point of view, scalability also also means that uh, it's more easy for exponential organization to scale down, actually. And uh, this is not uh, so oftenly uh, uh, this discussed, but uh, if you are uh, any kind of organization and you are making iterations uh, and uh, uh, the global economy is also, also changing and you can meet uh, such kind of situations as COVID uh, did in the last couple of, of months is still doing uh, in different parts of, of the world. But if you are a scalable organization, then it's not so painful for you to scale down. And for example, uh, uh, Uber didn't have to release or, or fire any, any uh, taxi drivers. Uh, so they just could not have an, an, an offer. And uh, but for example, or Airbnb, they didn't have to close any any hotels or, or and keep uh, staff to, to run those empty buildings <laughs> of course they offered um, a, a huge amount of money for their uh, yeah. best hosts uh, so they, they can survive this situation and after the lockdowns are over then they can easily scale up um, again so uh, but we what we usually forget and of course we are always take, uh, taking a look forward that uh, in some cases we need to scale down for, for operations as well and if we are an exo and have a high exponential quotient then it's not so painful to scale down and come up with something new thank you peter before i let uh, peter <laughs> answer next questions uh, can i ask everyone to quickly fill in the feedback survey so i just share with you the link to the feedback survey it's uh, a quick one minute feedback survey your feedback is very important for us and also uh on the survey there's a question if you're interested in getting peter's slides so we can share them by emails to you yes i will definitely send you and yeah feel free to use and reuse them and spread <laughs> the, the 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 word of exo uh, definitely definitely your communities okay if you guys still have any questions uh, please ask questions uh there's one question uh peter what do you think yes. will be the future of exponential organizations i think mm -hmm. it's also relevant when we talk about the impact of the COVID 19 pandemic right yes i also had a, had a slide but uh, was hidden in my presentation mm -hmm. uh that um so uh we many are saying that uh COVID brought us uh, an un unprecedented time but if you are taking a look back, uh, for example, what internet uh, did with the business models around the globe, okay, of the, the impact was not so uh, short, uh, but uh, how many things uh, we have now doing differently or when it was starting in 1993, just in the upcoming few years, how much uh, change and how much impact uh, it, it had. Uh, and uh, taking a look at the different exponential uh, technologies they are uh, uh, following this very quick and even uh, accelerating growth rate uh, we, we could say that uh, these times are not unprecedented and uh, the the future of uh, of exos i think it's it's bright <laughs> because uh, we all, all feel that uh, exos 
are, uh, are a new breed of organizations, which is not about uh, making a profit, but rather making a positive uh, impact and led by uh, purpose-driven uh, entrepreneurs. And if they are following our structure and they are following our, uh, our, our, our methodology, then they can uh, create uh, uh, exponentially scalable solutions. And if there is a need, they can also scale down as it was discussed uh, previously. So I think that uh, the, the EXO uh, approach uh, will have and will find its way towards many, many or big organizations. And that's why we are organizing many uh, events uh, around that one. And also the number of uh, the EXO community has grown uh, significantly. Like we had 500 members last year and we have now 5,000 uh, mem members uh, on the Open EXO community. Uh, uh, today and we have seen also that the methodology has found its way towards startups and we already know about uh, several uh, for example venture capital investors which also take a look on the exponential quotient of, uh, of, of the startup they are thinking about to invest in so uh, it's getting more and more uh, more popular and I'm also spreading a novel is also spreading uh, and many people are already spreading uh, the, the word of, uh, of, of this movement well, thank you, Fidel. I guess it's time for us to wrap up. So next week, we're going to have a webinar talking about the future of learning <laughs> post COVID-19. All right. So it's going to be with uh, Christine nasser Gotzi, the managing partner at Mirai Partner, Dubai-based strategic learning and leadership consultancy. They are focusing on the human side of change. We will discuss one of the hottest topics during COVID-19, which is the future of education, the future of learning. So if you're into education and learning and would like to have a discussion about the, the future of it, so come and join us. We'll email uh, to you uh, the information and how to register. And you can always check out our website and social media channels. Also, these are the calendars of our webinars in the next uh, six, seven weeks. So we have some uh, great speakers coming from different places and different topics. So we got pretty diverse topics to talk about. And like Peter said, <laughs> and I think I've mentioned it in, in my previous yes. webinars as well. So we're gonna run a purpose challenge. This is a global purpose challenge and an Inti Hub with a purpose alliance. We co-organized the, the purpose challenge for Middle East. The theme is the future of work. So uh, what's gonna happen here is that you're going to work with people from all over the place, not only from Middle, Middle East, in a three hour workshop using the exponential organization framework, which uh, Peter has already told us earlier, the MTP scale, scale and ideas. And within three hours, uh, you need to reinvent and innovate and reimagine the future of work, of work especially for the Middle East. So there will be a global coach that will be mentoring you, giving you mentorship, and you also have the opportunity to get the certification, a blockchain-based certification. This is what I like, <laughs> We're talking about technology, right? So 26th of June, and the deadline for the registration is 17th of June. So please uh, register if you haven't. And this is something that is going to be coming soon. Uh, so we are actually launching the 10X Sprint, which is the six week immersive online experiential journey to become future proof innovators, entrepreneurs, and entrepreneurs. So more news on this will be coming. And Peter, before we close this webinar, do you have any closing message for everyone? Mm -hmm. I already uh, mentioned in my in my closing uh, remarks. Um, okay. So that that I, I could just uh, repeat, but yeah. uh, taking the EXQ survey is always uh, uh, an, uh, an ex ex exciting journey. If, even if you are more from one organization, and uh, if more people fill out and we see all the results, and it's always good, good uh, way to start uh, debates and discussions about the future of any organization. So I encourage you to do so. And from my side, I would encourage you, if you haven't, find your massive transformative purpose for yourself and then find your massive transformative purpose for your organization. 
if they haven't got one. I think, mm -hmm. you know, uh, having done the exercise of the MTP, it really helps us a lot in defining the direction where we want to go. It's like our northern star. And it's a guideline for us to make some critical decisions. So find those. It's not a vision or mission statement, but something that is actually where you have the patient on. So uh, Peter, thank you very much for sharing mm -hmm. your expertise in the EXO uh, transformation. So really, really appreciate your time. And everyone, thank you very much for joining us. Please uh, stay safe and healthy and see <laughs> you in our next webinar. Mm -hmm. Bye for now. Thank you, Noel, for the invitation and this good series of, uh, of discussions and webinars. You're welcome, Peter. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, Bye. everyone. See you all. See you. Take care. Bye-bye.